My name is Adil Gasli. I'm going to present to you this first chapter, which is an introduction to power electronics. You should have already studied an introductory course on power electronics, but this chapter will just refresh your mind on what you have maybe already studied. This video is divided into three parts. This is the first part of it. Before we start introducing power electronics, we'll present a historical review of the creation of direct current and alternating current in electric power systems. Then we'll present the definition of power electronics. Then we'll highlight the growth of power electronics, which is driven by contemporary issues that we talk about also. After that, we'll show the disciplinary aspect of power electronics. And finally, we'll review some basic converters and see some applications. Now let's start by watching the AC versus DC movie that is uh, actually on YouTube and which presents well the story of Edison and Tesla and their war for the utilization of AC or DC power systems. You probably recognize this equipment as components of an electrical grid. You likely have something similar on utility poles in your neighborhood, bringing electricity to the homes and industries in your community. You may be interested to know that the technology mounted on this pole was at the center of an epic battle between the competing theories of the famous American inventor Thomas Edison and an obscure Serbian academic, Nikola Tesla. Tesla's theory won. Here's the story. In the late 19th century, Edison had become a household name, known around the world. His inventions and innovations covered everything from telegraphy and the movie camera to the phonograph and the light bulb. By the time he was finished inventing, he held over a thousand patents. He was brilliant at not only innovating, but also at business. Edison turned his inventions into commercial successes. In the case of the light bulb, he created a complete power system, generating electricity and delivering it to customers, energizing their light bulbs. Edison's system typically used a steam engine to drive a generator, creating direct current electricity. This is an Armington and Sim steam engine. Edison purchased hundreds of these to turn his generators. Steam engines like this were fueled with coal, wood, or oil. This miniature steam engine demonstrates the process. In this working model, electricity heats water, producing steam. The pressurized steam is controlled by a valve system to drive the piston back and forth. A connecting rod from the piston connects to a crankshaft. This device converts the oscillating linear motion of the piston to a rotary motion, turning the flywheel. A valve controls the speed of the engine. This is a generator. Permanent magnets surround coils of wire. The coils rotate in the magnetic field, inducing a flow of electricity. In this miniature generator, the electricity flows through the filament of a light bulb. A drive belt connects the flywheel to the generator. Once it is up to speed, the filament glows. Electrical energy has become light energy.
Edison's generators produce DC or direct current. This means that the current, a flow of charged particles, usually electrons, always travel in the same direction, from one terminal of the generator through the load, in this case a lamp, to the other terminal of the generator. Battery cells also produce direct current. Electrons flow from minus to plus. Edison built hundreds of DC plants around the world. He realized that there was a huge market for electric light. But there was one technical problem he had not resolved. The electricity lost energy as it traveled through the wires. Once the wires from the generator exceeded two kilometers long, there was not enough electrical energy left to turn on a light bulb. Every customer had to be within two kilometers of the power plant. This phenomenon was called line loss, a serious problem for Edison. There was no obvious solution. Nikola Tesla, a Serbian electrical engineer, arrived in America in 1884. He brought with him the solution to Edison's problem. Tesla was an engineer and mathematician. He understood the science of the day, including Ohm's law and Joule's law mathematical descriptions of the relationship between voltage, current, resistance, and power. Joule's law reveals Edison's problem. This simple formula, power equals current squared times resistance, tells us that the power lost when current flows in a wire is equal to the resistance of the wire times the current squared. Current is represented by the letter I and is measured in amperes. Resistance is measured in ohms, and power in watts. Most of the power lost becomes heat. The wire gets warm. As you can see, resistance in the conductor is one factor in line loss, but current affects line loss exponentially, I squared. Reducing current without reducing available power would solve the problem. There is a way to do this. We can rearrange Ohm's law to state that R equals V over I. Substituting V over I for R in Joule's law, we get this. Power equals voltage times current. Here is what this means. Low voltage and high current can produce exactly the same power as high voltage and low current. 100 amps times 10 volts represents 1,000 watts of power. 2 amps times 500 volts also represents 1,000 watts of power, with the advantage of a small current traveling in the wire. Edison knew that higher voltages and lower currents would resolve the line loss problem, but high voltages were dangerous. There had already been some deaths when experimenting with this solution. It was not possible to safely deliver electricity at a thousand volts or more into homes. He had no solution to the I squared R problem. The solution that Tesla proposed, a solution rejected by Edison, was to abandon direct current and develop an electrical grid using alternating current, AC. Unlike DC, alternating current doesn't flow constantly in the same direction. It changes direction, surging back and forth. Alternating current is easily produced with a special type of generator, and AC has some very interesting properties. This surging back and forth motion of the current produces electromagnetic radiation that can induce current flow in adjacent but unconnected conductors. Tesla understood this radiation and perfected a device capable of changing voltage and current in an electrical system the transformer. This changed everything. Suddenly it was possible to deliver electricity hundreds of kilometers using high voltage low current transmission. The low current reduced line losses dramatically. The wires carrying the high voltage were suspended on towers at a safe height. The final step in this brilliant solution occurred when a step-down transformer converted the electricity back to a less dangerous low voltage with higher current for use in the homes and industries of the community. The relatively short distance from the transformer to the home meant that line loss from the higher current was minimized. Tesla had found a solution to the line loss problem. Edison realized he had a problem. 
his direct current systems were in trouble. He launched a bizarre campaign to discredit Tesla, even holding public electrocutions of animals to demonstrate the dangers of alternating current. But in the end, even Edison's wealth and reputation couldn't defeat the math and science. Tesla won. He solved the I squared R problem. You won't have to look further than your front yard to see Tesla's alternating current in action. This transformer in front of our house is converting the very dangerous thousands of volts on the supply lines to less dangerous 120 volts for use in our home. Alternating current electrical grids cover the globe, delivering power from a multitude of sources through an interconnected network of transmission lines and transformers. This is Tesla's vision of electric power transmission realized. Innovation with alternating current is just one aspect of this amazing man's life. Visit our Tesla website. Now coming to the definition of power electronics. It is usually defined as the conversion of and control of power from one form to another form by means of power semiconductor devices, wherein these devices operate as power switches. So power electronics is used to process and control the flow of electric power by supplying voltages and currents in a form that is optimally suited for the application loads. Power electronics has witnessed a tremendous and rapid growth during the past few decades. This growth is mainly due to the advances in power semiconductor devices, the advances in microelectronics, including microprocessors and microcontrollers, and embedded systems, development of new control algorithms, and demand for new applications, which are usually driven by current and contemporary issues. Let us now highlight some of the most important contemporary issues which have driven the rapid growth of power electronics. We start with the energy scenario. Nowadays, most of the countries are trying to reduce their dependency of fossil fuel, such as coal, oil, and natural gas, and also their dependency on nuclear power resource, because as you know, the depletion of all these non-renewable resources is obviously expected. So the solution is to tap to renewable energy resources, such as solar, wind, fuel cell, ocean waves, tidal energy, etc. All these renewable energy resources require conversion on, and of course, shaping of energy to feed the requirements of the loads. And that's where power electronics is needed. Power electronics contributes also to energy saving in several different applications. For instance, variable speed compressors based air conditioning system we can provide around 30% saving compared to the uh, conventional thermostate on-off controlled system. We know also that lighting system using electronics ballasts can boost efficiency of the fluorescent lamps by 20%. These are just few examples, but there are many others. The second growing contemporary issues are related to the environment which have witnessed recently with very serious growing concerns. We can highlight first the nuclear safety concerns, especially after the recent nuclear power plants incidents which took place in Russia and Japan. You also know that nuclear power plants may remain radioactive for thousands of years. A second concern is related to the burning of fossil fuel which emit polluting gases such as carbon dioxide, carbon oxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxides. These polluting gases are found to cause global warming by greenhouse gas, gas effect and acid rain, and they also create smokes in urban area, increasing pollution in these urban areas. So power electronics bring solution to all these environmental issues by facilitating the applications of clean and renewable energy resources and decentralization of power station to remote non-urban area. It also allows the introduction of non-polluting vehicles such as electric and hybrid vehicle which we can find nowadays running on the streets of many countries. 
Power electronics is really a multidisciplinary field of research and development. As you can see in this figure, in order to design a power electronic system for certain application, you need to have sufficient knowledge in different fields, such as electronic and solid state devices and circuits, knowing the physics of the devices, power system and equipment, both static and rotating, and also analog and digital control theory and systems. Some other knowledge in other disciplines is also required when it comes to finalizing the product and making it commercially viable, taking into consideration, for example, the packaging and heat transfer issues. Without forgetting that when you do design, usually you uh, simulate first your design, so you have to develop computer programs and do some simulations uh, before you do the implementation. So as you can see, uh, this is a field of uh, multi-disciplines and uh, that uh, encompass different knowledge in the different fields. This is the end of this part. Please join us in the next part and thank you for listening.